So identifying patients uh, who are newly diagnosed uh, with metastatic urothelial cancer uh, who should receive immune checkpoint blockade up front versus the switch maintenance strategy uh, has become a, a, a current clinical dilemma that we didn't have before. Um, right now, immune checkpoint blockade is a single agent in metastatic urothelial cancer is approved for patients who are considered ineligible for cisplatin-based chemotherapy based on the risks of cisplatin potentially outweighing the potential benefits uh, and harboring tumors with high pdl one expression. So that's the setting where we currently give upfront immune checkpoint blockade and also to patients who are quote unquote chemotherapy ineligible. Um, that strategy is still a potential strategy, but now we have switch maintenance data stating that patients uh, can get chemotherapy up front and then benefit from immediate switching to immune checkpoint blockade. So are there any patients who should get initial uh, immune checkpoint blockade as a single agent in this day and age? Well, I think that, um, uh, that the biomarker data that we presented from Invigor 130 provides some context in that regard, although again, it's not definitive prospective data, um, but in patients with both high TMB and high pd one expression uh, who get immune checkpoint blockade up front versus chemotherapy, uh, those patients do incredibly well. And so whether or not they would do just as well with a chemotherapy switch maintenance to immune checkpoint blockade uh, treatment strategy. We don't know that. I'm not sure we'll have trials to answer that question, although those trials are really what's needed to definitively determine the biomarker sequencing treatment question that currently faces us in clinical practice.